Hello, everyone. I wanted to talk to you tonight about something that has been bothering me. And this is, I'm not going to be, this is not going to be a blame game. I'm not blaming the student. I'm not, but it bothers me. If I would tell, if I told you that what you're about to see doesn't bother me or doesn't hurt my eyes, I'd be telling you a lie. And uh, I'm a very frank person and I like to set things out straight. Um, no matter what the consequences are, because for me, the most important value there is in life is truth, or at least the pursuit of truth, that your intention is to search for truth. So I wanted to share with you a solution. And the student claimed when I saw that at City Tutoring this morning, the, the student claimed, and I take his word for it, because I have I have seen things like that before. Student claimed that his high school teacher didn't clarify the and I, and I'll I'll get to that in a moment. And that the teacher didn't clarify the the, the real laws of square roots or, or roots in general. And I'm going to share with you something that came up. Here is a solution that has been bothering me. And it should bother you as well. If you are a math instructor, according to the laws of uh, radicals and roots, when you multiply square root of A times the square root of B, you can join them together under the uh, radical symbol and you have the square root of A times B. Then the student showed this. Take a good hard look at this. Negative 3 times negative 27. And then by applying this logic, the student said, oh, that's easy. Negative 3 times negative 27. Two negative numbers give me a positive. So I get positive 81, the square root of 81. And I get, uh, and then my answer is positive 9. Do you see anything wrong with this? And, you know, this is sort of the, the classic, I'll just apply the square root without bothering to check if it's actually valid. That's the move, right? Brilliant. But let's kind of walk you through this little exercise in mathematical comedy, if we can even call it mathematical, shall we? The student has, has felt bold. And felt that you can just apply this to any two numbers, basically. Now, normally, yes, this would be a perfect moment to sit back and admire how, you know, the student confidently ignores the small detail. That square roots, uh, this is something that you should know by now. Square roots of negative numbers don't play nice in the real number world. There is no such thing in the set of real numbers as a negative square root. But no, what do we have here? We just have someone plowing ahead with the grand assumption that the rules of real numbers apply universally. It's, it's almost like a mathematician who's forgotten that the real number, the real number party has a very strict no negative numbers policy. That is the that is a law of math. And so let's kind of break this down, right? Uh, this is what the student did, right? How wonderful, isn't it? An equation that takes you from the world of, they're called the imaginary numbers. That's why mathematicians created the, the imaginary numbers so that you can actually do this. And they're called complex solutions. And it takes us to, in this case, we're going back to the land of real numbers where everything is sort of simple and uh, well-behaved. And nine, where did we get this nine from? It just popped out like a magician's rabbit. What a lovely fairy tale, truly. But in the world of real numbers, the square root of negative numbers is a little more, uh, shall we say, complicated. And I'm not known to, to be the king of understatements, but you see, what you have here, negative, the square root of negative three is not a regular number, a, uh, a real number. It is called a complex number. If you want to be more specific, it's, should be labeled as the imaginary radical three. See if I can draw it in. 
right? So what do we have? So we have I radical three and I is called the imaginary unit. Remember that old friend that we talked about a, a while back, the one who's defined? And how is the how is an imaginary number defined? Well, an imaginary number, the the a definition would be I squared equals negative one. Right? Some of you have studied that. Some of you haven't. If you haven't, then now it's going to make sense. Uh, I thought that they might have uh, you might have met these at some point. And so what about negative uh, the square root of negative 27? Well, it's not just 27 either. You can define it as 3i radical 3. And there we have it. So when you multiply, going back to the original problem, when you multiply the square root of negative 3 times the square root of negative 27, you get, you multiply the i radical 3, you take these two elements, and this element, and multiply them. And you have 3i radical 3. Now, if you distribute this, you have 3i times i. That's the imaginary part, right? So remember, the complex num these are called complex numbers that have an imaginary part and a real part. So i times 3i, if you know your laws of exponents, when you have the same base, you add them. You now have 3i squared. I hope it fits. So you now have 3i to the square and multiplied by 3. Why? Because let's be careful here. Why? How did I get my 3 here? Because radical 3 times radical 3, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 gives me the square root of 9. And the square root of 9 does indeed simplify to the 3. So if I squared, remember we said, we just said I squared is negative one. That is the definition of an imaginary, uh, the starting point. So then that means that we can multiply the three times negative one and we get three times negative one times three. This gives me negative three multiplied by three, which actually gives you a negative nine. What happened? Wait a second. Did we just really get negative nine? That's a bit awkward, isn't it? You were hoping for positive nine, weren't you? But it looks like reality just laughing at you from the sidelines here. So, okay. I don't want you. So don't get me wrong. Okay. It, it's, you know, when students try to do things like that outside the laws of math, sometimes it's cute. When you, especially when you when you're thinking for a moment about you know there, there's that pesky little issue of imaginary numbers that are uh, lurking in the background, but next time that you that anyone wants to invite negative square roots to the party, you might want to remember that they come with a guest list. We're kind of special in math. I'm sorry, we're mathematicians. We're special people, and unfortunately, in that guest list, real numbers aren't on it. So what is the moral of the story here? This is equal to negative nine in the complex number world, not nine. And you keep that in mind the next time you decide to play fast and loose with square roots. And remember, negative numbers and real square roots, simply they just don't mix. They do not mix. Um, you know, it's like trying to, you know, mix some ingredients that are not going to turn out well in, in a very specific kind of recipe. Just don't do that. And if your teachers haven't clarified that, they should. And I think most teachers clarify that, but I get a lot of people who, who tell me all the time that the teachers don't. So if you're a math educator, uh, kind of go over this, please, with your students. Tell them that, uh, clarify what, what set of numbers they're working with, because it's often it often leads to confusion. And one of the things that I've learned throughout the years is the it's not just the definition it's having students actually practice it over and over again so that they can um, develop some of those skills so thank you for watching this video and
again, we're going to always, this was a, a shorter video. Today, I also uh, made a video on the, the derivative, an informal definition of the derivative. You can, you can check it out in my calculus uh, playlist because some of you had been asking about uh, more advanced math. So I, I told you, we do all kinds of math. We're not just limited to pre-algebra or algebra. We do all of the math. Um, it's just that sometimes I get more people asking me for one math over the other. All right. So thank you for uh, watching this and we'll be in touch.